This video is brought to you by the Farmer Klein YouTube channel. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Hello everybody, welcome back to another Farming Simulator 22 Map First Impressions video. Today we're going to take a look at Sichu Security. But before that, this video is brought to you by Donald Smart and Mesum Kiv. Thank you for being Farm Barons. So the Sichu Security map can be found over at the FarmingSimulator.com website or the in-game downloadable content menu. And as of the 1.0 release, this map is available for all platforms. Now I got the pronunciation of this map off of Google Translate. When I plugged the map into Google Translate, it came back and didn't recognize it as Portuguese. Knowing that this is based in Brazil, I did select Portuguese. It gave me an alternate spelling. I selected on that. And well, it turns out that this map is roughly translated as Anaconda Site. Yeah, you know, those big snakes. I don't like big snakes, and I cannot lie. So, yeah, let's go ahead and move on in. Sito Sekuri is a small map with smooth reliefs, small properties, and preserved vegetation typical of the interior. This map is based on a region in the interior of Brazil containing 60 purchasable fields, 29 of which have missions. Starting as a new farmer, you will have a small farm with machinery and small implements. This map also includes grapes, cows, and chickens. The forest area has its price reduced to make it easier for working with wood. And if you need water, you can take it from the river. You know, where anacondas live. Yeah. In the city, there is a gas station, shop, workshop, and market. The map has all standard sell points. Sales of grain at the warehouse and cooperative. Sale of bales, straw, hay, and grass at Mr. Bales. Sale of wool and cotton at Mr. Cotton. Mr. Woods Timber Company for sale of logs and wood chips. Sale of milk and derivatives at the dairy. BGA collectibles are scattered around the map. A seasonal growth is standard. And the map includes a new crop in pinto beans. Let's go ahead and load on in. We are going to use the mods that we typically use when we take a look at maps. That is additional field info, additional game settings, field lease, field calculator, and precision farming. Let's go ahead and pull up the log. And while the map loads in, I will say if you load this map up in farm manager mode or start from scratch, you will find the main starting farm exactly how you see it here in new farmer mode, with the exception you do not own the land, nor do you have the same bank balance, right? You're gonna have a different bank balance. You do own machinery in those alternate play modes. Let's go ahead and take a look at the PDA. So this is a smaller sized map to begin with. Let's zoom in. We do have all the standard crops available to us, including pinto beans. Take a look at our lands. We start off by owning farmland one, two, and 50. Farmland 50 is where the grapes are located. And then farmland one and two also includes fields one and two. That is the main starting farm. In addition to the main starting farm, there are seven other pre-placed farmhouses on the map. We've got one right here by field eight, one over here by field 28, one by our grape area. Then we have one down here to the southeast. We have one here kind of toward the middle of the map, just just around field nine. We also have one over here to the west below field 12. And then there's one final one down here at the bottom of the map between fields 19 and 20. Let's go ahead and take a look at our farmland lease screen. The farmland lease screen is gonna show us all of the viable farmlands, how large those farmlands are, if those farmlands include fields, which fields are included, then ultimately how much those farmlands are gonna cost us. As you can see, we own farmland one, two, and 50 at the start. I'm gonna slowly scroll through this list and you can feel free to pause the video or slow it down at any point in time if you wanna take a closer look at any one particular farm land. We are then gonna go ahead and take a look at our field calculator screen. Field calculator screen is gonna show us all of the viable fields and how large each specific field is that is viable. We can then cross-reference the field number here with the farmland that is associated with that field on the farmland lease screen. 
Let's go ahead and take a look and see how the generic soil map is getting applied to this map. Our starting fields are a mix of silty clay loam and sandy loam. The fields kind of to the west of the map are a combination of sandy loam, loam, and loamy sand. Fields to the south, a mix of loam and silty clay. And then there is a field 28, which is predominantly loamy sand. Taking a look at our crop counter, we do have the standard base game crop counter available to us here on this particular map. And if we look at pinto beans, we can plant those in April and May, and then harvest those in October and November, just like we can with soybeans and corn. Taking a look at our prices screen, you will see that we do have the ability to sell all of the crops that we can grow in Farm Sim 22. In addition, we do have the ability to sell eggs, wool, and milk, silage, hay, straw, and grass. And as we get down here to our productions, you will see that we do indeed have the ability to sell most, most, but not all productions. For whatever reason, we are missing the ability of selling chocolate. Chocolate is the only production that we cannot sell. We also have the ability to sell lime, but apparently we don't have a lime price. We do have a bulk lime buy point though. We also have a stone crusher pre-placed on the map. Here you can see where we can sell our pinto beans. As far as our platinum expansion production, we do not have the ability base map in order to sell any other platinum expansion products. So if you do want to use platinum expansion production, you will need to put down your own sell point for those. And if you are playing with pumps and hoses, we do indeed have the ability to sell separated manure. Taking a look at our starting vehicles, most of our vehicles are got a lot of operating hours on them. And pretty much all of our vehicles are pretty bad off as far as maintenance. So you're not going to have a lot of residual value in a lot of this machinery. So just do note, it is all owned, but you may be wanting to repair a lot of this stuff if you are going to be trying to sell it for max value. And some stuff, well, it's just not going to have a lot of value to it because it's got so many hours pre-placed. We do start out with 30 cows as well as 30 chickens at the starting farm. The map does have contracts available. We do start out owning a small greenhouse also at the farm. You will notice the greenhouse has already been pre-stocked with water and lettuce is enabled. As far as our animals goes, we do have TMR for our cows, straw, and water. Then for our chickens, we do have our grain already placed. This map does include the Holt Betharoon game cartridge collectibles as well. Let's go ahead and take a look at that rundown starting fleet. We start with the New Holland T6-175 and the Voltra A-135 high-tech small tractor. We have a Dutzfar Topliner 4090H Harvester that is paired up with a Topliner 4090H Grain Header as well as the five-row Champion Corn Header. We then have the 4090H Header Trailer. We've got our 1986 pickup truck as well as a Brainer Z 18051-2 XXL Power Flex Trailer. We have the Hardy Mercury 4000L Grape Sprayer. We have the Agrimaz PO5 XL Plow. We have the Joker 4CT Disc Harrow. We have the Nordstein HK25 NS 3030 Power Harrow and Cedar. We have the Maxima 3-Till Planter. We have a Hardy Mega 1200L three-point hitch fertilizer and a herbicide sprayer. We have an Amazon ZATS 3200 fertilize spreader. We have the VT-130 and Spider SP-6834 slurry tank and applicator. We have a GMD-4411 side mower. We have a GF-8712 tether. We have a GA-4731 windrower and the VB-3190 round baler. We have the ABI Attachments 550 water trailer, as well as the RA142 feed mixer. We have the Q4M front loader arms. And then for the front loader arms, we have a pallet fork. We have a 650 kilogram front weight, as well as a 1100 kilogram front weight. 
And then we round it all out with a Bachman MHAL 4320-35 flatbed trailer. Again, there are no leased items. And if we take a look at our mods and DLCs list, you will see that there are no custom vehicles or implements that are part of this map. Wow, that was a lot of equipment. And I will tell you by kind of exploring this map already, most of this equipment is not here on the main farm. It's kind of scattered around the map. There's like a couple pieces of equipment at almost all of the other seven farm possible areas. So here we have our starting farm. We spawn in here right at the chicken coop, right? This chicken coop is set up to hold 60 chickens. We've got our food trough and our egg spawn point. In fact, we are already spawning some eggs. We have our maintenance shed here. We have our farmhouse. We have a pet dog, of course. We have a small greenhouse. The harvester is already set up to start harvesting one of our fields. We have our fuel tank. And then we have our cow area. The fuel tank already has nearly 5,000 liters of fuel in it. This animal area will hold 250 cows, of which we already have 30. And we move on in here. We have our water trough, food trough, milk trigger. And this is undoubtedly our straw trigger. And slurry point. And that is pretty much the starting farm. Now, with respect to the farms being customizable, well, the starting farm here suffers from an issue where you can sell some of the stuff, but not all of the stuff. In fact, what you can sell is you sell a farmhouse, you can sell a silage bunker behind the farmhouse, you can sell the pressure washer, you can sell a fuel tank, you can sell the greenhouse. And that's about it. Uh, you can sell the doghouse too. The maintenance shed stays. The chicken coop and cow area stays. Even if you sell the animals, those areas stay. The fence stays. So you got a little bit of an area here. If you wanted to rearrange things, you can rearrange some things. But a lot of the stuff here at the starting farm is going to stick around. Get a little bit of altitude now this is a kind of small map but even with the small stature of this map this map includes 13 productions built in we have the small greenhouse at the main farm we have our sawmill we have a spinnery bga taylor dairy grain mill sugar mill bakery cereal factory an oil mill grape processing center and a carpentry now, most of those productions are down to the southwest in town, but we do have quite a few productions placed on this small map. So we are going to give the map a full point with respect to having production built in or areas set aside for such. In fact, we are looking down to the south right now towards the town. With respect to production, or sorry, the ability to sell all crops, base game products, and animal outputs. We are going to have to take off a quarter of a point because we do not have the ability to sell chocolate. For whatever reason, that is pretty much the only thing that we can't sell. And it does hurt me a little bit to know that I have to take off a quarter of a point for that. But still, maybe the map will get updated and have the ability to sell chocolate in the future. We can sell lime, but it doesn't appear we can buy lime, at least looking at the prices screen. But what we will see here in a little bit is we do have a lime fill silo. So down here we have a biogas plant, which we can buy, and it is fairly inexpensive to purchase this. So our BGA is located right here at Farmland 10. It's just $40,000 to buy that. 
If you do buy the BGA, you can sell the three-sided bunker and you can sell the BGA itself. So if you wanted to put down the pumps and hoses BGA, you could do that if you wanted to. Here we have the starting of a quarry. Every quarry starts at ground level. So this is, in my opinion, the starting of what will hopefully be a very nice quarry. See, we've got some lime already piled up there. We will have to buy the lime mine before we can make use of that. That is $158,000 to buy. But you can see we do have what appears to be a lime fill point right there. We have our stone crusher. Here we have our grape vines. One of our, our, one of our alternate farms is located right here. We can sell the farmhouse, but we cannot sell this shed at this particular alternate farm location. We have another alternate farm location right here. And now this particular location, we can sell both the farmhouse and the shed that is here. So this particular farm location, we can sell both. Another farm location is kind of right down the road from our starting farm. It's located right here. We can sell the farmhouse trailer. We cannot sell the old barn. So we kind of have a mix of what we can and cannot sell. Remember I mentioned that kind of scattered around the map we had machinery. Well, this isn't a farmhouse per se. But for whatever reason, our planter is over here under this ship. So you're going to have to kind of go on a little bit of a scavenger hunt in order to try to find all of your starting machinery. Of course, here is the river that you can pull water out of. And also the river where the anacondas live. So yeah, there's that. Just south of Field 25, we have another possible player farm. We can sell both of these items here, the shed and the farmhouse. We have a grocery sell point. We have our fuel station and a grain sell point located right there. As we make our way into town, here we have our animal dealer and the sawmill, Mr. Woods sawmill. To the south of the sawmill, we have another possible player farm. And in this particular scenario, we can also sell both the trailer and the shed. Here's another example where we have a few bits of our farming machinery. And it just scattered around under this shed. This isn't tied to a player farmhouse in any way. And then we come into the town. So we have our bakery to the right. We have a restaurant sell point to the left. We have Mama Joe's Diner sell point to the right. We have our vehicle shop. We have the farmer's market. Here we have Mr. Cotton. This is the bale cell point as well as the spinnery. We have our grape processing. We have our sugar mill. We have our dairy. Our grain mill. Our cereal factory. Our tailor. Our oil mill. And our carpentry. Over here at the vehicle shop, we do have our customized sell, trade, repair, and repaint trigger. We also have our shop trigger here. Let's go ahead and get the Mahindra. Let's see where our vehicle spawn in at. So we got a decent area for our new machinery to spawn in at. And we definitely have the ability to get out with larger machinery. As far as coming down through the road, I think this road is adequately wide enough 
for most large pieces of machinery. Now, I'm not quite sure about the bridge crossings to get over the river and how wide that is going to be, but we're about to go take a look at that. Let's quickly just kind of rehash from the end of the town here and maybe make our way counterclockwise around the map as best that we can. We have our carpentry. All right, so we have our interactive trigger, we have our dump point, our wood cell trigger, and our pallet spawn point. We have our tailor right behind that, and our interactive point. We have our wardrobe trigger, we've got our dump point, and our trigger for our pallets there around the back. We have our base game oil mill, where we have our pallet spawn point, dump point, and interactive trigger. We have then our cereal factory with a dump point, pallet spawn point, and interactive trigger around the back. We have our cereal fat or not our, our sugar factory with our pallet point around the back. Our dump point and interactive point are going to be around the front here. We have then the dairy. Now let me see, has this dairy been modified to the where it doesn't produce chocolate? Let's just see. Nope, it says chocolate down there in the info screen. We do indeed have the ability to produce chocolate. We just can't sell it. We have our grape processing center then right past the sugar mill. Bale's spawn point, interactive trigger, and our dump point. Here we have Mr. Bale's cell point. And then across the street, we have Mr. Cotton, which is our BGA location. And they will also buy bales of cotton if you produce that. So we have our dump point, pallet spawn point, and our interactive trigger. Farmer's Market cell point. We have Mama Joe's Diner cell point. We have the bakery dump point, pallet spawn point, and interactive trigger at the front. We have the pizzeria cell point. And then just out of town. We do have a interesting assortment of farm machinery that's ours. The farm between field 19 and 20 is right here. I think we should go on a little bit of a scavenger hunt to see if we can find all of the machinery that we own that is part of the map that we just can't get to. Here we have Mr. Wood's sawmill. We have our wood chip point. We have our wood dump off point, our wood cell trigger, and our interactive icon and pallet spawn point. We have our animal dealer. Located right here. We do have a sheep pen also on the map. That's just not at the starting farm. We will be getting to that during the drive around portion of the video. So we have a fuel station. And here we have the warehouse cell point. And then we have the supermarket across the street. So 
So there we have a supermarket. We have a player farm right there, just south of field 25. Let's run across the map in this direction. This should take us by the sheep area. There is right there. We're gonna have to maybe swing around to get to that. This is the back end of the sheep area. Then we have a player farm there south of field 12. And our round baler is located over here. I think I mentioned we can sell this farmhouse, but we cannot sell this pole barn that is permanently a part of the map. So with respect to can the farms be customized, we're going to give the map a half a point because we can customize certain things at the starting farm. We can customize certain things at some secondary farms. And we can sell everything at some other secondary farms. Now this is an interesting thing. Here we have the sheep area. And we have the wool spawn point. And we already have a little bit of wool, 37 liters worth of wool, already here at the spawn point. But we don't have any sheep. We can put 30 sheep in the pen. And in here we have our food trough and our water trough. But it's a little strange that we already have some wool. I think what happened is um, is maybe the map author How do I shut the gate? There we go. I think maybe the map author uh, did a little bit of play testing somehow and left the uh, left the wool spawned in there maybe. And then just here at the sheep area, we do have a player farm. We can sell both the farmhouse and that machine shed. And there we have our windrower, our tether, and our mower. And speaking of wool, we got another pallet of wool over here. Six liters worth of wool. Just kind of scattered around. Huh. Head back to the main road. So as far as the bridge over the river, it's not overly narrow. I think it should be good for just about any decent sized piece of machinery. Now these are relatively small fields. Here we have our starting farm. We do have AI traffic on this dirt road. This is going to take us over to another non-player farm. And we have our sprayer under this shed. Now, if you do own this land, this land can be bought. If you do happen to buy this land, you can sell that shed. And 
And then if we make our way here to the far north, just above field seven, we have another NPC farm. And over here we have our fertilized spreader. So we just passed our sprayer, there's our spreader. It's like this guy let the uh, let the local community borrow his machinery and they just never returned it. It's not very nice. Ah, oh, we're stuck here, okay. Let me double back. While we're doubling back, buildings are using the new texturing technique. Let's take a look at our ground textures. We didn't really look at our ground textures. We have fairly standard FS22 textures there, plants and trees. So overall, we're going to give the map three quarters of a point with respect to buildings using the new texturing technique and ground textures. Most of the buildings on this map are FS22 stock buildings. There are a few non-stock buildings and a few of those non-stock buildings are not using the new texturing technique as best as I can tell. So we are going to take off just a quarter of a point there. Now we can't put down the custom cow area or sheep area or chicken area. And then everything else on the map is pretty standard. Two Brazilian maps in two days. A pretty interesting run on maps overall. Five maps in two days as far as new map releases. Even more map updates if you factor in map updates as well. Here we have our biogas area. This is for our biomass heating plant. We can sell wood chips and logs. We have our BGA, so we have our bunker. We can sell that if we own the BGA. And we can sell the BGA itself, again, if we own if we own it. Oh, there we got some sugarcane growing. Sugarcane is great in multiplayer. I wouldn't really try to do it in single player. It's kind of a pain. Watch out for traffic along these dirt roads. Then here we have the beginnings of a quarry. If we buy this area, we can collect a free line that's on the ground. If not, let's see if we can buy a bulk line, even though it's not listed in the prices screen. We can indeed buy a bulk line. We have our stone crusher. Then we have our grape vineyard over here. We have our tractor and sprayer already set up. And here we have another possible player farm. We can sell the trailer, but we cannot sell the pole barn. And then we have one more possible player farm to take a look at. And then with respect to our final scoring metric, are player and interactive areas clearly marked? I do believe that they are. So we are going to give the map a full point there. So if we add up all of our points, we're going to give the map a score of a 4.0 out of 5. Pretty res respectable score. We lost a little bit of points because we don't have the ability to sell chocolate. That could have bumped it up to 4.25. We lost a little bit of points because of the few additional buildings weren't apparently using the new texture technique. That could have bumped it up to 4.5. And... A had we been able to sell everything on all of the player farms, including the animal areas, that would have bumped this map up to a 5 out of 5. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. What would you rate the map? Is this a map that you're getting ready to jump into? Does the fact that the map translates to Anaconda area bother you at all?
And until next time, happy farming.